This is the Aftermarket Radio Network. Hey, thanks for subscribing and listening to the Aftermarket's original and premier podcast. Hey, Carm Capriato here, the Aftermarket Podcast Guy. We once again welcome Jerry Kazai and Dr. Laura Schwalik, owners of the Auto Shop in Plano, Texas. They're also leading Business Builders Mentor and Mastermind USA. You know, hiring superstar employees is a goal of every business person that I've known, including myself. Our intention is to find the best of the best in order to seed the company with outstanding and culture-driven people. As you know and I know, that is not always the case. Now, how can we get better at recruiting and filtering out just the cream of the crop? Well, Jerry and Dr. Laura will take us through a process along with a few great stories to help us get better at finding and hiring superstars. Find Jerry and Laura's other episodes and the key talking points for this episode at remarkableresults.biz forward slash E594. Hey, thanks to our sponsors that make this episode possible for you. Now, the Virtual Apex Experience 2020 is in the record books. And I got to tell you, Virtual Apex lived up to presenting leading technical and business management training from some of the industry's best and brightest. Now set your sights on the homecoming in Las Vegas in 2021. Mark your calendar now. November 2nd through the 4th, 2021. Apex, now more than ever. It's as easy as 123. Shopware's shop management system allows customers to review, approve, and pay for repairs all in one place. Now keep your staff and your customers safe while maintaining profits and keeping your customers happy. Learn more at GetShopware.com. We wouldn't be here without you. Yep, the Aftermarket's premier podcast has thrived for years with over 800 plus episodes among all our formats. I'm glad you've let the podcast help you broaden your horizons. Beware now, you may just learn one new thing. Hey, don't miss the weekly virtual shop tour every week at aftermarketweekly.com. We talk aftermarket stuff and deliver a new shop tour each and every week. Watch all the episodes on the web at aftermarketweekly.com. Hey, warm welcome to Jerry Kazaya and Dr. Laura Schwalek. Hi. Hi. Hello. Good morning. Great to be here. Welcome back again. Thank Thanks. you so it's much. It's a great day to hire or fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're darn tootin'. Any day is a good day to hire and fire. It is when you know how to do it. Exactly right. Well, hey, glad you're here. Last time you were on, we were talking about hiring superstars, and I said, we've got to get together and talk about this, especially since you guys wrote a book, Hiring a Superstar. We've talked about this in the past on the show, but I don't think we can talk about it enough. Uh, new people join the show all the time, and we all, you know, what we need, we always need to be re-energized. We always re- need to be reaffirmed that you know we're doing a lot of things right. So we're looking for people with drive. We're looking for people with track records of success. Well, now that's cool. We're looking for win-win attitudes, right? Why do we have to hire good people, great people, superstars? The fun thing is, is most people think that good people are hard to find. Well, the truth of it is, I don't think they're hard to find at all. I think they're easy to find when you know how to do it and you're a good employer. You've got to have that part taken care of. You got to remember that when you're searching for an employee, they're searching for an employer at the same time. They're shopping and kicking tires just as much as you are. And let's just talk for a moment about why we hire employees. Why do we have employees? Two reasons. The first reason why we hire employees is to do the things we don't want to do. We might have done those things in the beginning, but we don't want to do them anymore. I know some people, they just can't get out of their own way. They just want to stay in their bay. And as much as their business is is growing around them, it's probably shrinking and they think it's growing. Your ability to grow is directly related to your ability to delegate. Mm -hmm. That's a writer downer. If you can't delegate, you cannot grow your business. It's impossible. I'm sorry. So if I got stuck in my bay and I'm a diagnostic junkie and I've got other people doing things, as long as I've delegated, do you think I should stay there? That depends on your passion, depends on what really lights your boat. The second reason that you hire people is Laura had the first one. It's to do the things you don't want to do, right? And the second reason is to do the things you can't do. For example, years, years ago, as I was getting started, 
I could not do the bookkeeping to save my bacon. I just couldn't do it. It did, it didn't fit in my wheelhouse. I didn't understand P and L statements. I didn't understand. So I hired a really good bookkeeper. I hired a really good accountant. And I will tell you, it was game changing for me at the time, Carm, because I was still stuck under the hood with a wrench and a screwdriver in my hand. Okay. That's no longer the case. I have since graduated. And the reason that I've graduated is because I found that I can actually do better with one of these than I can with a wrench. And Jerry's holding up a pen, everyone. Yes, a very nice pen, I will tell you. So what's the problems that we all face when we're hiring? So my background is I was a chiropractor and I had a front desk help, you know, my front desk assistant. And she would schedule appointments, collect the money. And when I first hired her, I thought, oh man, this is great. This is, and it really helped my business a lot. And then I noticed that You know, 10 minutes, she'd be late 10 minutes or she'd need to leave early or she'd be leave early for lunch or she'd be eating breakfast at her desk or she'd be putting her makeup on at her desk or she'd be in the bathroom putting her makeup on when the phone is ringing and, uh, you know, patients were coming in and out. I had the false thinking that good people are hard to find. That's actually a, a thought that a lot of people have. And you put up with it. I did. I tolerated it because I wasn't sure that I was going to find someone better because I didn't know how to find someone better. And I really hated going through all the hundreds of resumes to, how do you look at a resume and find someone? And so we came up with a hiring system that is so clean and easy and saves so much time, especially looking at resumes and saves money too, because there's a huge cost in hiring the wrong person. Making a wrong hire is a very expensive hire. If you hire improperly, if you hire the wrong person, they can cost you four times their annual salary in the first six months. One of our very first clients in our coaching business, Carm, uh, he had the false belief that good people were hard to find. And the very first week that he signed us to work with him, right? That he signed the, the, the contract at the time we had contracts, right? He signed a one-year contract with us that very first week. His superstar admin person cost him documented $15,000 just that first week because she could not handle the calendar. She had him double and triple booked on the same days at the same time. And as an attorney, you you can't do, you can't see three people at the same time. It's impossible. And so he had people walk out. He had people that said, don't ever call us again. I mean, he lost lifetime value. Who knows how many hundreds of thousands of dollars over that in over just that one week that we, that we monitored. Yeah, but even a great system like yours, there's going to be failure along the way. I mean, if I followed your system, what's the chances or what's the percentage that I'm going to do good, like 80%? It can't be 100. Uh, and you're talking good as far as your hire? Yeah, great. How do I find superstars if I follow a strong, disciplined system? It's not going to be perfect. Okay, so first of all, everyone is going to going to interview well. But the way that we have it set up and the way we talk about it in our book and, and the way we have it laid out in the book, you don't just have one interview process. There are several trip wires, we'll call them trip wires, that the applicant must go through or they automatically self-select out of the process, which saves us unknown hours of time and bad hiring choices. So you're right, Carm. It's not going to be 100% every time. However, it's going to get you a heck of a lot closer than where you would have been. Okay, so let's just talk about how most people interview. They look at the resume, they call the person and say, can you come in for an interview? So they set aside, let's say half an hour to an hour to interview with that person. And let's say you have 12 people coming in. So that's 12 hours. Maybe four out of those 12 people may show up. So now you've, you've kind of set aside hours of your time to do something and you're waiting around for them. So you can't focus on something new because you've allotted this time. What if they walk in? And so, and this is after you've spent so much time on uh, looking at their resumes. And then if the people that do show up, what people base their hiring on is whether they like them or not. Is this person like me? 
Do they seem enthusiastic? Do they seem like they have a good attitude? And that's not a good reason to hire someone because of how they seem. And that's part of what this system cuts out is it cuts out your opinion and and helps you to, and I know this from experience, it has helped me to hire the right people. I'll give you an example. I, I had invited 15 people to come, women, because I wanted a female for the front desk. I invited 15 women to come to the interview. Six of them showed up. And there was one that I thought, you know, I'm. she doesn't really resonate. I'm not resonating with her. But when I went through the whole system, everything I asked them to do, all of the details, because it was a detail-oriented position, everything that I asked her to do, she did everything perfectly. Perfectly. And at the end of our hiring process, I looked at Jerry and I said, well, who do you think I should hire? Because, um, you know, there's one that I really like. I resonate with her really well. And Jerry said, well, which one is the you're looking for somebody detail oriented. Which one is the most detail oriented? I said, well, it's this one, but I'm not really resonating with her. And he said, well, that doesn't matter. You're, that's the one you need to hire. I hired her. She was so happy and she worked for me. If I, if I hadn't sold my practice, she would still be working with me because she did everything the way I asked her to do. She, every hoop that we asked them to jump through, she jumped through perfectly. And she was amazing on the job. Never skipped a beat. She was absolutely fantastic. She cried when we sold the practice because yeah. she wanted to continue working for us. So you didn't choose the one that you resonated with, but the, but the one that you did, did you end up resonating with her? Yes, very much. It was like an arranged marriage, you know? <laughs> it was like, this is the perfect one because... She sounded great on the phone. I mean, her phone skills were immaculate. Her sales skills were wonderful. Her ability to be with people was wonderful. And it just, like, she and I just didn't hit it off very well at first. But then from the first day of training, I mean, she just took to it like a duck to water. And and But I never would have hired her if I had based my hiring decision on who I liked. Here's an interesting statistic. They've done a study. They've done this study three times now. They've taken professional police detectives. Now, these are people that do investigative uh, interviews every day of their lives. Is that fair? Right? I mean, that's what they do. They're detectives. They're trying to find out who's trying to solve who, who caused the, the crime and, and what happened. Three times, they've had professional detectives do interviews, and the detectives got it wrong more than 50% of the time. These are people that do this all day, every day. And if they get it wrong most of the time, what are your chances as a small business owner if you don't have a proven system? Great stat. Hey, Carm here. And coming up, Jerry and Dr. Laura help you with some effective firing tips. Hey, Carm here. The virtual Apex Experience 2020 is in the record books and brought the best and the brightest together to create an experience like no other. Virtual Apex delivered on their commitment to the service professional and provided sessions dedicated to technician and business management training. Apex also presented Joe's Garage with important demos and product knowledge segments. And the first annual service professional awards were presented. Hey, the great news is that all of this was recorded and it's available on demand on the virtual platform until December 5th, 2020. So if you earn your living in the aftermarket, Apex is definitely for you. Now, sure, SEEM is fun, but you'll learn more and see more that relates to your sales growth, profits, and productivity at Apex. Apex continues to present some of the best aftermarket technician and management trainers. Hey, mark your calendar now for Apex 2021, November 2nd through the 4th in Las Vegas. Listen here to learn when you can start registering. Hey, today's pandemic is causing so much stress and uncertainty for everyone right now, especially shop owners. Now, how do I make sure that my staff and my customers stay protected while still moving cars through the bays? Contactless service is our new normal. And having a shop management system that not only supports this, but actually helps your business thrive through it all is key. Shopware's digital workflow with remote pay will provide that solution for you. Amy Matnett from Auto Craftsman recently commented on social media, and I quote, 
I can't even express how grateful I am that I jumped on board with Shopware on January 1st. Would have never guessed that I would be the only one writing service at my shop, as I haven't worked in the shop for the last 15 years. But she goes on and says, I'm running my shop nonstop every day with Shopware to help me not only get the job done easier and faster, but am totally wowing my customers. End quote. Hey, if you want to wow your customers too, request a demo at GetShopware.com. What's the first thing we should put in or have to have in our hiring system? Okay, so first of all, I'm, I'm just going to jump in. The first thing you need to have is a really, really good job description. You need to be very clear on what that person is going to do. Because if you're not clear, there's no way that they're going to be clear. And that just sets them up for failure. It sets you both up for failure. So what do you do? Write down the tasks that you know they're going to do and then turn them into duty words? Yeah. It's pretty simple. We have, we have downloadable templates on our website. And the website, you get it. Uh, it's, on the, it's actually on the back of the book here at the top. And it gives you uh, Word documents that you are, are free to edit and use and make it yours. And you have to worry about HR laws, HIPAA, and all that stuff. I mean, you have to worry about the fact that you've got stuff in there that's non-discriminatory, right? Oh, of course. But we go through that in the system. Good job description is important because your employees, you know, when you're playing basketball, you don't wait until the end of the game and you're in the locker room to find out, did you win or lose? Right. You know, you look at the scoreboard and you go, oh, look at this. We're winning. Let's keep playing hard. Or you say, we're losing. We need to crank up our game a little bit. When you have a documented job description, your employees can look at that and go, I'm winning this. I got this. Right. Or they know when they're not and they can crank it up themselves without being told. The second thing you have to do is you have to create an outgoing message. Okay. Now you're thinking, what are you talking about? An outgoing message. Again, you go to our website and you can download the uh, template for the outgoing message. My outgoing message, I think, takes about two and a half minutes to listen to. It tells you exactly who we are what we're looking for, and what we're not looking for, what will disqualify you for the position. And once you have that outgoing message, then you get a hosted number for voicemail. Is it a number that they call to find out about the job and the employer special number? Yes. Yeah, so never- when, you do, when you do place the ad, you'll have the job description there and what they're supposed to be doing. And it will say, do not send your resume. So if it's say the job is posted through Indeed, you'll say, do not forward your resume. It will not be seen. Call this number to find out more and to leave your name and phone number and we will contact you. Let's get into some detail here. Get a special cell phone that I use just for hiring. Uh, what do you recommend? Uh, you can, but the problem with a cell phone is usually you are limited to a 30, 30 second outgoing voicemail. They're not going to let you do a two or three minute. Our uh, outgoing voicemail goes along the lines of, hi, this is Jerry Kazaya, and you have reached the hiring hotline for the auto shop. It says, first of all, I want you to know that I know how tough it can be to find just the right job. I want you to know that this is a real job. It pays real money. This is not some fly-by-night business, so you don't have to worry about that. We are a successful busy and always growing. In my case, it was a wellness practice. In the case of the auto shop, it's we're a very busy auto repair center. This is what we're looking for. We are looking for people with a good attitude. We're looking for, and then we go on to describe what we're looking for. And then we also describe a little bit about what we don't tolerate. We don't tolerate drama. We don't tolerate gossip. We don't tolerate people being sick all the time. If you're somebody who's sick all the time, please do not apply for this position. And we say that right in the right in the thing because what you're doing is you're filtering big time. Yes, yes. and that's a big part of the system is filtering. They have to jump through hoops. So what we get is the cream of the crop. We get somebody who wants to work. If they hang in there till the end, the odds are going up and up and up, right? Because as you start, here's what I want, here's what I don't want, and then they leave a message. Now you say oh, maybe it's worth doing the interview. Once they leave the message, then you log into your hosted messages. And in our case, over a weekend, we'll get 50 to 100 applications. 
Okay. And I can go through literally karma. I can go through a hundred applications in less than 10 minutes. Okay? Because we're listening to their phone message. Mm-hmm. We're listening to their voice. If their voice resonates with us, because we're looking for someone that answers the phone and takes care of our customers, right? P- particular. If, now, if you're not, if you're, if the person's not going to be on the phone and they're not going to be dealing with customers and yet they're, they're going to be just, you know, doing, let's say bookkeeping, or they're going to be doing IT, then it's not so important, but particularly important for your service advisor. Exactly. What do I have to do to get this phone number and this, this, this voicemail thing working? There are hosted message companies out there, a company that we have, that we are grandfathered in with. They no longer do this type of business, but our line, Carm, is, is like less than $20 a month and it includes 1,000 minutes. And so if I was going to go online to find this number and message system, I type in what in Google search? Hosted numbers. Hosted numbers. Okay. Your message is there. They're going to leave them. You've got a special dashboard. You can get to it. So your your first big step, job description, then get this hosted number going so you can filter. I love the idea that it's your voice. And Laura, in your particular case, your business, you're hearing from the owner or, or the leader or the, the manager. Yeah. No, we always make it the owner of the shop or the owner of the business because we want them to understand that this is very important. It's important to us to hire the right person. And we want you to know, we want them to know when they're making the call that you're working right with the top here. To me, if I was looking for a job and I, I hear the owner's voice, it's like, okay, that cranks it up a whole different level. Okay, so I'm getting that phone number from Indeed as an example. What strategies are behind the Indeed ad? We have our our typical ads, again, on our website and in our book. We don't sponsor the ads. We don't pay for uh, any of the advertising on Indeed. We've never had to do that. Honestly, the results will be sometimes so overwhelming. Uh, You can have 200 applications over the weekend. It's really amazing. One of the main things to understand is when you post an ad and you have found someone or you want to stop the, the ad, pause it. But if you need to rehire for that same position, create a whole new ad. Don't just turn it on again because it'll be buried by all the other ads. Your ad starts up at the very top. And then after a few days, it starts getting buried and buried and buried. And then after a month, you'll never even see it, even if you turn it back on. So just close that one out and repost. And so do you go into Indeed and type in uh, automotive technician? And if even if it's way down the list, it'll, it'll, it'll be found? Well, we're not, again, we're not using this to hire technicians. We're using this for our CSRs. We're, we're using this for marketing help. We're using this for uh, receptionists. We're using this for admin people. You're not using this to hire technicians? No. No, because it doesn't really matter what they sound like on the phone. You know, if you could get technicians to show up, you want to interview them. You want to look at their resume. But our biggest problem in our industry is hiring technicians, period. Case closed. Yeah, we need to hire the other people. I get that. But what kind of tips can you give us on that? Carm, the best tip I can give you is make a simple ad, make it real. Um, We've tried complex ads that say all of all of our bonuses and what we offer, and we got some from that. The simpler the ad, the better the results that I've been getting with technicians. And I literally have an ad that says, uh, now hiring superstars only. eighty to $120,000 a year. Call this number Monday through Friday, uh, no weekends, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the, that's the ad that we run. And that number that they call is? My shop number or my cell number. It's For technicians, I want them to talk directly to me. The technicians are where we make our, our money. The CSR, if it's, if it's done properly, your admin person makes you money long term. It's not the immediate. So we call it future bank. So technicians are current bank. Uh, CSRs and the proper admin create future bank. Jerry, let's concentrate on the, the technician since I know it's the, the biggest need in my audience. Um, w- tell me about the, the interview. I hear so many different thoughts. What's your strategy on that? When they come into the shop, first of all, of course, they'll call us in response to an ad and we'll talk to them on the phone, find out why are they looking, where are they working now, 
what happened to cause them to be disgruntled and want to, cause I've had one guy, he's telling me, I said, dude, you know what? I'm going to tell you right now, you've got a gold mine. You'd be a fool to leave. So, I mean, we've, and that was last week. If it wouldn't be a good fit, I'd rather find that out over the phone before we do anything further. And then once we find out if it's a fit, we set up an appointment, have the technician come in, he will interview with me, then he'll interview with our our front service manager and the other service advisors. And then we'll bring our techs in and just visit with him, walk him through the shop or her, right? Walk them through the shop. I've had female techs that do a fine job. So I don't want it to sound like I only hire men, right? But so we walk them through the shop and get a feel for them. Then they come back into the office and we we seal a deal. Any advice on ghosting where you hired them and they just don't show up? And, And you could have ghosting day two, ghosting day three. I mean, we're spending so much time on the hiring process and then either they're not showing up. And I, it happened to me in the past year. I, I get so down on myself that I did something wrong. It's the nature of the beast right now, Carm. I, I don't know anybody who is not having a ghosting issue. And I talk to, I talk to shop owners all over the country. I talk to other businesses, not just the automotive business as we're in the, you know, we're in a, the business builder coaching. We've got folks from Washington state, all the way to Delaware and New Hampshire uh, and everywhere in between. And and everybody is experiencing ghosting issues. There are more people that are trying to hire than there are people that are willing to work right now. The pendulum swings and it goes both directions. As sometimes it's a, it's a owner's market and sometimes it's the employee's market. Right now it's easier for employees to get a job than it is employers to hire people. You know, your listeners, Carm, are usually the, the cream of the crop. They're the better autom- automotive repair shops that are in this country and elsewhere. And so they will find it easier to, to hire technicians than the folks that don't listen to you. The folks that you just said that don't listen to me, I'm re- trying to recruit them to listen to me. The words that come from the essential voices of the aftermarket that come on this show are critical to them to, you know, to have a private little networking thing like we're doing right now, uh, overhearing Laura and Jerry talking about this stuff. Where else can they get it if they didn't, you know, and, and most of them don't even have a, a, a 20 group, a networking group. This is where they can get it. So I'm, I'm always genuflecting every night and saying a prayer that more and more people that are on that fringe come inside. We want that. We want that. And you know why we want that? Because the top 20% of this industry could be the top 25 or 30% of the industry if people just make that step, move forward, find a coaching company, get in a, get, get with a consulting group, join an association, get involved in pick networking. Me, me. <laughs> I'd like to say a little bit more about hiring technicians and the questions that we ask. So right away on the phone, we ask them, where do they live? Because... Some, some of them think that they're going to be able to drive an hour each way, but they're not. They're, that's going to get old quickly. Another is why are they leaving their current position? And if they are not currently working, are they accepting unemployment? Because if they're currently accepting unemployment insurance, then they're probably going to ghost you for sure. They're just on the call because that's their proof that they're looking for a job. So yeah. it's, it's okay to ask that question. It's not illegal, at least not as far as I know. And if they're not working, how come they're not working? Yeah. Wait a minute. You're a technician. Why are you not working? And for an individual who is working, Jerry, are you discovering that they, you know, are just looking to get ahead, are looking to cream up in a They don't find the opportunity at another place. Maybe there is some inside of your company. They want to make more money. They want somebody that'll give them training. They want a better culture. What are you hearing? Everything. Last week, we interviewed a guy. He was... On a salary, making $50,000 a year, five days a week. He had uh, full benefits at his job. He was disgruntled because they didn't get him his parts quickly enough for him. And I said, does it affect your paycheck? He said, no, I make the same money regardless. Okay. Um, you might want to look at where you're at. Maybe you can get them to give you a raise. But, you know, sometimes... With all the SKUs we have on cars, sometimes you got a special order parts. I mean, I, I don't know how to get around that. 
poor excuse. One of the best questions to ask is why are they leaving their current position? Because that technician is the common denominator. And if they're leaving because they can't stand management, okay, so what is it about management that you can't stand? What is it that's, you know, and, and ask them probing questions. Oh, and what is it about that? Oh, really? Tell me more. You're right, Laura. The answers to those are going to eat, could could conceivably bring a superstar to your place or, a, I hate to say this, cancer to your place. Absolutely. Exactly. That's exactly what we try to avoid You've to got the it. best of our ability. I've, been, I've sat in my office and talked with Laura and after interviews with some people, and I said, that person will never work for me. Not ever. And she's like, why? They seemed really good. I said, did you hear the negativity? Did you hear how bad they squawked about every employer they've had? We're just going to be another notch in their gun. That's all it's going to be. And you know what? I don't have time for that. It's not worth it to me. Let's jump into effective firing. Well, there's in. it's different in each state. And so you'll have to know your state regulations. In Texas, it's still a, like at cause. Texas is a right-to-work state. So there must be cause for firing. You can't just say you're fired. And so there's a specific step-by-step process. And there are forms that you can uh, purchase that are already pre-made that uh, will walk you through the process of writing someone up. So we start with a communication form, which is basically... Are you, as the employee, very clear on the expectations that we have of you regarding performing your job? And so sometimes we have to do a communication form where then they get clear. So we write down, this is what I'm expecting of you. This is what's missing from your job. Or there's uh, something that's not being done, not a detail being missed or part of the system that they're not, they're not consistently doing. So we write that down and then they have an opportunity to write down either their side of it, whatever. And then we both sign it and we both have a copy of it. That's a communication form. Now the firing form, and this is where the term the pink slip came from. Because the first copy is white, and then the next copy is yellow. So the first time you actually write them up, like let's just say, for example, they're showing up late. They're showing up late. That's a really simple one. You write on there, showing up late. Or let's just say that they abandoned their job post. The parts guy is supposed to be in his bay or in his parts department, or the technician is supposed to be in his bay, and you look around and he's not there. And it's like, well, where did he go? Nobody knows where he went. Okay, so he abandoned his position. That is a reason for firing someone. So you write it up on the white copy, and then the next time it happens or some other infraction, that goes on the yellow copy. So you write it, you have the conversation with them, they write down any of their comments, they sign it, you, it's a, it's a, a four part form. So you rip off the top part, give it to them. And then the next time, the yellow one, that's like the warning, like it's the universal system for warning, a soccer game, uh, whatever it is, the warning, the yellow flag. And then you write them up again and you tell them, hey, listen, this is what we need. This is what you're either doing or not doing. If you do this again, that's a grounds for immediate dismissal. But Laura, it is for the same infraction on that one form, right? It does not have to be the same infraction. You can write three different infractions on the same form and fire them the same day. I see. It, uh, okay, so you, they're not having a warning for any one particular thing. They're having a warning because they have breached some values in in the business and, and the ex, expectations of the job. I got it. And it's again, it's a very important to have a great job description. Once you have that documented, you can pull it up and say, okay, in the job description, it said you're supposed to be here by 7.30 in the morning, not 7.45, not 8 o'clock, not 8.30, 7.30. And were you here this morning? No, I was not. Great. I'm writing you up for not being here at 7.30. And if you don't do that stuff in the early part of the relationship, you can start any time, I guess, but you can't let that stuff go, especially if the rest of the troop watches you be lenient on someone. My friend Dan Kennedy, one of my early mentors, Carm, said, fire fast, hire slow. 
And I know there's owners out there and other people going, oh my God, it's so painful to hire somebody. No, it isn't. Really, it isn't. But it's to me, I have no heartburn letting somebody go. By the time he gets to that point, okay, so I've owned my business for 40 years. I've said this before and I'll say it again. In 40 years of terminating people, hiring people, etc., I've never had one person that I fired not know it was coming. They've all, 100% of them knew it was coming and said, well, I figured today's the day, isn't it? Yes, sir, it is. And then on the last part of the forum, they know that that pink slip is coming. And the the last slip is then. And the the final one that is the carbon is blue. And that goes in their file. So that when, if they do file for unemployment, or if there's something in relation to sexual harassment or something like that, it's like, you know what? No, this is why they were fired. And it's all documented. And I'll always have a witness. Make sure that you have, you don't have these conversations one-on-one, you and the employee. Have a witness in the room with you. And use your phone to record it. Mm -hmm. And let them know that it's being recorded. Because if they don't know that it may not be allowed or admissible as a a legal recording, but let them know. There is one girl I fired and I let her know right up front. I said, I want you to know that this is being recorded. And I asked her a question and she lied to me and I asked her a question and she, and I asked her the same question three different times, three different ways. And she lied each time. And I said, you know, this is your last day. And she's like, why, you know, why it was apparently a surprise to her. And I said, because you're lying to me and I can't work with somebody. I can't, I can't hire you and pay you with good conscience, knowing that you're lying to me. Hey, look at, I know you got some more going on, but we've got, I think a hell of an episode here and, and it's good. It's succinct. It's powerful. I learned a lot. We were together, uh, uh, maybe a month and a half ago. We did a great podcast, 575 on building wealth. And, and I know your company, business builders, not only, I mean, Jerry is a coach and a consultant for all industries and it's, and, and it's just not automotive. And, uh, in fact, today, I had a great friend on the podcast. His name is Greg Buckley. I think everybody knows Greg, who talks about the fact that he is in with your group and he loves the fact that there's other businesses, non-automotive in it. You talk about reaching outbound and, you know, developing big, heavy think from other people. And, and I, and I think it's a, a fascinating mastermind thing that you have going on, Jerry. Thank you. I I will tell you, uh, I love working with Greg. I think I think he's just one of the neatest guys. Uh, we have some amazing conversations, and because of the work that we've been doing, he's had the best the best October he's ever had in his career. I'm glad for both of you. That's great, Jerry Kazai and Dr. Laura Schwalik the Auto Shop Plano, Texas, and Business Builders Mentor and Mastermind BBMMUSA dot com. Thanks for being here. It's a great day to hire and fire, let me tell you. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time.